council members and participants, we are now live. Good morning, good morning. Um, we are joined here for this morning's Finance Committee hearing. Um, I will also give the opportunity for I see Council Member Maria Kino Sanchez just came on if she would like to provide a uh, sound check for Modesto before we begin. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am present. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, thank you for being here today for this Monday, December 6th Committee on Finance. I understand that state law currently requires that the final announcement be made at the beginning of every remote public hearing as follows. Uh, due to the current public health emergency, uh, known as COVID-19, city council committees are currently meeting remotely. We're using Microsoft Teams to make these remote hearings possible. Instructions for how the public may view and offer public testimony at public hearings of council committees are included in the public hearing notices that are published in the Daily News, the Philadelphia Inquirer, and the Legal Intelligentsia prior to the hearings. It can also be found on phlcouncil.com. I now note that hour has come. Mr. I. Newsy, will you please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are present in attendance, will you please indicate that you're present when your name is called? Also, please say a few brief words. Um, when responding so that your image will be displayed on screen when you speak. Council Member Cindy Bass. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, colleagues and listening public. Thank you. Council Member Alan Dom. Good morning, Mr. Chair and colleagues. I am present. Council Member Curtis Jones Jr. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, colleagues. I'm present. Council Member David O. Good morning. I'm present as well. Thank you. Council Member Maria Canona Sanchez. Good morning, Mr. Chair. I am present. Council Member Mark Squillo. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and colleagues present. Council President Daryl Clark. Good morning, Mr. Chair. I am present. Good morning, um, Chair Derek Green. Thank you. I am present and good morning and thank you to uh, fellow members of the Finance Committee and to the viewing and listening public. A quorum of this Finance Committee is present and this hearing is now called to order. This is a public hearing of the Committee on Finance regarding bill numbers 210782, 210783, and 210864. Mr. Iannuzzi, will you please read the title of, titles of these bills? Bill number 210782, an ordinance amending bill number 210320, approved June 28th. 2021, entitled an ordinance to adopt a capital program for the fiscal the six fiscal years. 2022 to 2027 inclusive by adding, revising, and or removing certain projects, amounts, and sources for the purpose of providing uh, safe play zone security cameras under certain terms and conditions. Bill number 210783, an ordinance amending bill number 210321, approved June 28, 2021, entitled an ordinance to adopt fiscal 2022 capital budget by amending, revising, and or removing certain projects amounts and sources for the purpose of providing safe play zone security cameras under certain terms and conditions. Bill number 210864, an ordinance amending subsection 19.2604 sub 6 of Philadelphia Code, credit for contributions to community development corporations, nonprofit organizations engaged in developing and implementing healthy food initiatives and nonprofit intermediaries to clarify the number of contribution agreements that may be entered into all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you, Mr. Iannuzzi. Before we begin to hear testimony from the witnesses we have here for today, everyone who has been invited to the meeting to testify should be aware that this public hearing is being recorded. Because the hearing is public, participants and viewers have no reasonable expectation of privacy. And by continuing to be in this meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. Additionally, prior to recognizing members, uh, for the question or comments they have for witnesses, I will note for the record at this time that we will use the chat feature available in Microsoft Teams 
to allow members to signify that they wish to be recognized in order to comply with the Sunshine Act, the chat feature must only be used for this purpose. Um, before we call the first witness, I would like to acknowledge Council President Clark uh, for remarks he has um, on legislation for this morning's Finance Committee hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll be very brief. Uh, first of all, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak before the committee. Uh, briefly, just wanted to reference uh, Bill Number 210782 and 210783, uh, also known as Safe Zones for Rec Centers. Um, as you know, we suffered a rash of uh, shootings um, in recreation centers over the last several months, and um, and then we continue to have these horrific events. Uh, one of the things that uh, was noticed that um, frequently the individuals, the perpetrators, were shooting from outside of the rec center. And, and while we had a significant number of coverage, I want to thank Councilwoman Bass for uh, pushing this initiative uh, early on. Uh, they cameras were primarily facing within the recreation center site and did not capture the perpetrators. Uh, so after talking to the police department uh, and recreation, and OIT um, had several meetings and they determined that placing cameras on the exterior that have this new 360 capability would be able to capture individuals uh, outside of the facility and actually running away from uh, the particular rec center. Um, and I want to say thank you to them uh, for their due diligence in coming up with what we believe to be one of the answers of uh, hopefully stopping some of the senseless gun violence. Um, so thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Um, 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 look for your support uh, for this very, very um, important legislation. Um, did I'm assuming um, that when the witnesses come on, uh, either from OIT, they will talk about a timeline. Uh, that's the one uh, question that I would like to have. Um, but other than that, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for giving me this opportunity, and, uh, and I'm off. Thank you, Council President. Also, thank you for your work on this issue and also providing some history um, on um, this type of legislation, this, uh, this work to increase public safety at our recreation centers. Uh, this time, I'd like to recognize Councilmember Bass for a statement as well. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, and good morning again to all and uh, to Council President Clark. Uh, for his forethought and wisdom in bringing about these very important pieces of legislation. Um, as the council president mentioned, we've done a lot in this body around um, ensuring that our young people in particular are safe at our recreation centers uh, by adding cameras out of our own capital budgets. Uh, many years ago, Councilman Jones, you remember that. Um, and so we've all worked really hard over the years to ensure that we have the level of safety and security for our young people that um, th these times require. And this is, uh, as I see it, a, a, a very crucial part of making sure that that happens, adding on top of um, some of the things that we've had. This is uh, something I think that will be a very, very significant in reducing crime and being able to identify perpetrators um, when crimes are committed. So I just really want to, um, again, thank the council president for all of his hard work on behalf of the Committee on Parks and Recreation and, um, and all district council members and really all members because we all care about this issue so very much. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman Bass, for your uh, initiative in reference to starting this work in reference to recreation centers, making them um, safe. And thank you, Council President Clark, for this additional added um, perspective in the legislation we will hear um, this morning. Uh, are there any other comments from members of council, uh, members of this committee? Uh, seeing and hearing none. Uh, Mr. Inuzi, will you please call the first witness we have to testify this morning regarding bills number 210782 and 210783. Tavare Brown, Deputy Budget Director for Capital. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brown, good morning. Uh, are you connected and ready to proceed? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. Okay. Please state your name uh, for the record and then proceed with your testimony. I'm Tavari Brown. So, good morning, Chair, Chairperson Green and members of the Finance Committee. I'm Tavari Brown, Deputy Budget Director for Capital, and I'm joined by Budget Director Marissa Waxman. I'm here this morning to testify on bills 
2107.82 and 2107.83. These bills reflect the City Council's request to amend the FY22 budget and FY22 to 27 capital program for $1,815,000 in additional general obligation funds or CN appropriations as you would see it in the uh, amendment. The administration supports the bills numbers 2107.82 and 2107.83 with the amendments agreed to by the administration and council. The funding will be used to support an initiative to create safe play zones within the city. Security cameras with 360 degree views and technology will be installed and integrated into the video surveillance system to better assist Philadelphia police in their efforts to safeguard city recreation centers and playgrounds. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. If you have any further uh, concerns or questions, we're happy to answer at this time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, I know Council President um, Clark had a question regarding timeline. Okay, I would like to, uh, in general, we're working with the City Council in regards to uh, deciding on the, the locations for the various uh, cameras. Um, that's something that will affect the timeline. I would like to bring up uh, police and public property, I'm sorry, police and uh, parks and recreation to kind of talk through some of the potential locations. Um, uh, DC Dells, uh, would you mind speaking about some of the potential locations we've talked about? Good morning, how are you? Good morning. Good morning, Deputy Commissioner Dales. If you could just state your name for the record and then proceed with your testimony. Yes, Deputy Commissioner Joel Dales. I'm with the Philadelphia Police Department. At this point, we do have locations, but we decided not to discuss this yet until we see exactly what areas will support these cameras. So we had that conversation prior to this. But I'm more than willing to answer whatever the, what other questions you may have pertaining to security around the rec centers. And Mr. Brown, was there another witness you were going to have testify in addition to Deputy Commissioner Dales regarding the timeline? And um, before you do that, I see Council President Clark would like to ask a, a question. Thank, okay. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah real quickly, um, with respect to um, the locations, not the recreation facilities, but because the cameras will uh, likely be placed on property on the exterior and not necessarily on city of Philadelphia property, uh, there will be the need to uh, get authorization from various utilities who have poles uh, that will be adjacent. There may be an instance or two where um, we can actually place it on the rec center where you have 360 views because they're uh, you know, unimpeded views around the rec center. Uh, but in most cases, you do have adjacent buildings uh, and property. So there is a process uh, that will be done by the city that will uh, secure authorization to place them on probably a PICO pole uh, or some other type of utility um, in the immediate area. Um, and I do know that um, um, understanding the deputy's um, uh, unwillingness at this time, because we don't want to talk about locations until we're ready to proceed. Um, it is the hope of this council uh, at least this councilman, I don't want to speak for anybody else, at some point uh, that we do have uh, these type of technology and cameras on every rec center, similar to what we did for the cameras that Councilwoman Bass initiated, because as we found out that at any point, at any time, um, and in any location in the city, we can unfortunately have one of these horrific shootings. So we'd like to create these safe play zones uh, in every pot potential uh, uh, recreation center, uh, but today uh, we're just asking money for the initial pilot program. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council President Clark. Um, were there any other questions from members of this committee? I see Council Bass has a question. Uh, please proceed with your question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Deputy Commissioner Dales, I just had a quick question, and and I don't know that that maybe it's just that I'm not clear on this, but in terms of locations of these sites, I know we don't have locations yet, but um, 
I, I guess my question is, do we want like uh, do, do we want to say what the locations are? Uh, you know, like should we should should we not say? Can, can we can we not say? Um, for the sake of, you know, have being able to gather intelligence, but at the same time with public tax dollars, everything we do is public. But I know that sometimes security wise, um, you know, uh, you know, we, we don't put everything out there, especially when it comes to from a police perspective. So how are we dealing with that? So I, I have a breakdown. I, I can uh, make sure that each council member gets a copy. Um, stats that we develop based on the uh, rec centers or within 100 yards of the rec center where we experience uh, violence at high levels from 2018 to 2021. Um, I'm on the same page with you, um, but that's something we can have a conversation about once I um, show you um, some of the possible locations moving forward, if you're okay with that. Yep, yep. I was just wondering how we were going to handle that. Okay, that's great. Thank you. I'd like to recognize Councilmember Maria Kiana Sanchez for a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Real quickly, I know Council President Clark talked a little bit around operationalizing this. You know, in the past when we've done some of this work, it's taken a long time. Will there be a team dedicated to do this particular work? Um, or is this going to be folded into some of the other camera rollouts, which have been bumpy sometimes? So this is a slightly different uh, initiative than the camera rollers that we typically give through the council budget. Usually those are inward facing, so that kind of goes through the typical city process of um, the procurement process, let me just put it like that. But uh, this is part of the OIT structure, so they have uh, that implements some of the police uh, video surveillance system. So it's a slightly different team doing this as opposed to the ones that you're used to seeing through uh, your council ITEF funding. So there will be a dedicated team just doing this work. I just want to make sure yeah, that a team that does uh, the video surveillance system. Yes. So is it one team? Is it two teams? I want to get a sense. This is, you know, this is huge. This is important. This is time sensitive. So I'm just trying to get a gauge of making sure this doesn't get rolled into everything else. You know, how are we going to be ensured that this is prioritized? Sure. Uh, um, maybe some of our uh, Colleagues from OIT, maybe Sandra or Mike Vitro can talk to the uh, video surveillance system. Yes. Right, this, this time I'd like to recognize um, Sandra Carter. If you can please state your name for the record um, and proceed with your testimony. Yes, sir. Councilman. Sandra Carter, Chief Operating Officer, Office of Innovation and Technology. Um, um, to answer your question, Councilwoman Sanchez, there is uh, three teams currently due to the assistance of Councilman Jones, thank you, in previous years of collaboration where we do have um, those three teams deploying cameras across the city. To answer your question, um, we certainly can um, suspend, if you will, the other work and dedicate these three teams um, to focus on getting this work quickly. A lot of the timeline will be around the performance of the site surveys as well as making the equipment or receiving the equipment um in time to be able to deploy but we can certainly um dedicate our resources to make sure that this is the priority on behalf of council's request okay i think I mean, we can continue to have this conversation as part of the budget process I, you know i really don't want to subtract i really want to add and i i thought that there was a way that this allocation could allow us to add to the teams versus you know some of the other work that's being done is just as important um mm -hmm. so i guess we should continue that conversation about how do we add teams you know this issue of cameras um and more surveillance is a conversation we need to have in a broader base because it just impacts so much so many issues of quality of life whether it's trash mm -hmm. dumping whether it's you know crime fighting whether it's you know in this particular case creating spaces that people feel more safe because there's cameras so i just think that doing it with the current allocation of teams is is not going to be sufficient if we really want to prioritize that and so i look forward to that conversation as part of the budget but you know we want to enhance the work not track the work um, that's going on. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, um, Councilmember Sanchez. I'd like to recognize Councilmember Curtis Jones Jr. for a question. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to thank uh, President Clark for um, moving uh, the ball forward. I want to also recognize uh, a couple years back when we had a murder on one of our rec sites over at Tustin. 
young man, Bernard Scott, was shot observing a fight. He was an innocent uh, victim. They shot, they missed, they hit him. Um, and we then put, uh, as a part of uh, Councilwoman Bass, Councilmember Bass's initiative, cameras, about 12 of them, in and around those rec centers. Uh, so I want to go to them, Member Sanchez's notion that there needs to be a broader discussion about the evolution of how these cameras are deployed and then um, further conversation about how we utilize them with live eyes on in virtual patrols. Live eyes on in virtual patrols working with um, boots on the ground police. So, so Mr. Chairman, what, what, what I've noticed having been down at the real time crime center on a number of visits um, with a number of elected officials, we, we have a thing that is the geography of crime, where it happens, not just what happens, but where it happens. So if you're talking about someone getting shot at a rec center or at a school or on a SEPTA platform, crime happening. All of these things dictate a geography of crime that we need to map, that we need to prioritize. So if in if if Broaden Island is a hot spot, along with Broaden Erie, along with um, maybe Germantown and Shelton, then that becomes a virtual patrol of cameras that during the hot times, a, a, a retired police officer or a civilian highly trained in these kinds of matters is looking not just to apprehend criminals, but to prevent crime. Like, okay, um, uh, bad boy Green, DG, just got out. And his MO is that he, he slings up at Germantown and Shelton, and he's known to have a pistol in his pocket and da 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 those are the kinds of things that boots on the ground can be informed that he's out hugging that block, as they say, and we, we need to keep our antenna up. And so we need to evolve, as our member Sanchez said, as to have a larger conversation that talks about how we augment technology with humans, like real live eyes on. Um, and I think we're at a tipping point where this can become useful now that uh, we've uh, made the step of pro procuring actual cell phones for detectives that connect to the people on the cameras. I mean, you, you would take this stuff for granted, but you always it, it is our job to work with the departments to make sure they have what they need to be effective. So I welcome what Member Sanchez talked about which is a add on to this critical uh, appropriation to look at a broader strategy of cameras, personnel, and coordination. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Jones. And I will note for the record that your use of the letters DG um, did not make any connection to me or to any one member of the Bad Boy Record Street team. But I understand your point. Thank you. Are there any additional questions for um, this witness or any of the other witnesses that have testified on these two bills? Seeing and uh, hearing none. Am I, am, am I eligible to testify? I'm sorry. I don't know who is speaking. We have one speaker on the public comment okay, list for this so, bill, Mr. Chair. Right. Yes, and so what we will do, uh, I think that's Mr. Zachary, um, we will take the other witnesses from the administration who will testify on the other bill, Bill 210684, and then we'll go into the public comment um, portion so you, Mr. Zachary, will be able to testify. Okay, um, Mr. Inouzian, thank you for all the members of the administration who testified regarding 
bills number 210782 and 210783. Uh, Mr. Inuzi, if you can call the next panel regarding bill number 210864. Karen Fagley, Deputy Director of the Philadelphia Department of Commerce. Good morning, Ms. Fagley. Hi. Uh, good morning, Thank Chairman you. Green and members of the Finance Committee. Thank My you. name is Karen Fegley. Okay. I'm a Deputy Commerce Director over our Office of Neighborhood Business Services. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify on Bill 210864, which clarifies the number of contribution agreements to community development corporations and nonprofit organizations from 40 to 42. Um, so that means 40 CDCs and nonprofit intermediaries plus two healthy food nonprofits. Uh, this legislation as, is not a change from how this program has been operating. It is just a technical correction to ensure the allowable number of neighborhood CDCs and nonprofit intermediaries can continue under the program. Uh, the Commerce Department's primary responsibility is to ensure that those qualifying organizations use con contributed funds for economic development activities and in our in our broader role to drive inclusive growth, we work closely with many of the participating CDCs um, on their projects and programs. Um, note that the health department uh, provides a similar role for the two nonprofits that receive this contribution to implement healthy food initiatives. So as you well know, commerce critically relies on neighborhood CDCs and other associations to act as our boots on the ground. We currently provide funding to 48 organizations between the um, CDC, our, our corridor management program, the CDC tax credit program, and or the CDC economic development support grants. And I want to thank uh, council for its support of those programs. And thank you, Councilman Green, for your leadership on, on this matter today. So thank you for the opportunity. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, not seeing any additional questions or memories of council um, and Ms. Bakley and I know this has been a challenge for some time to address this issue and how we continue to um, provide assistance to the organizations. Um, can you provide a little bit more perspective of how you think this may help these organizations and others um, as a whole with this legislation? Yeah, so again, I think today what we're doing is is just clarifying, sort of correcting the number, making sure that that total number remains at 42. Um, uh, this program is really valuable to our CDC community, um, as I know, I think you all hear from them on that. Um, <laughs> but it's really novel in that it provides them with much needed operating funds, sort of operating and overhead funds. Um, that gives them the flexibility to then go after other grants to uh, to carry out their programs and projects. Um, so yeah, it's great. We have, um, you know, again, currently Commerce is currently involved with 40 organizations that are receiving that grant. I think uh, 12 of them are in their 2021 is their last year. So there will be and there is an application open right now. And in January, uh, we will be picking uh, organizations with their business partners for 12 slots that will begin January 2022. Um, you know, we expect the 12 who are expiring to all come in as well as probably a few new ones. Um, and then it's great that with, again, council support, we have the additional funds to provide the CDC Economic Development Support Grants um, so that we can ensure, you know, CDCs that may not get lucky in the lottery or get lucky in finding a business partners still have an opportunity for that broader operational support. And, and thank you, Ms. Fagley. Um, as you know, as well as uh, members of this committee and members of our council and as a general public, you know, our community development corporations are, are vital to our main street um, corridors and the small businesses around the city of Philadelphia. Um, we all know we have a 25 percent poverty rate and, and these organizations are very um, successful in helping to grow our grassroots community based um, businesses. Uh, and help them to uh, maintain and flourish. Um, this become, has become even more important because of the impact of COVID-19 and what the pandemic has done, not only from a public health perspective, but really has created an economic crisis in our city and many of these um, businesses really struggled and many did not 
uh, remain afloat and our community development corporations and other organizations were very instrumental as well as the commerce department in helping to get out information regarding ppp loans and other types of assistance um, that came about um, to really help these organizations stay afloat and help them to continue to employ people in our neighborhoods and communities around the city of Philadelphia. So um, thank you, uh, Ms. Fagley. Are there any additional questions or comments for um, this witness? And I believe this is the only witness on this bill, 210864. All right, um, seeing and hearing none, I believe we did have one witness from the public um, that wanted to testify regarding um, bills 210782 and 210783. Um, I believe that's a Mr. Zachary. Yes, yes, thank you. All right, if you could just state your name for the record and then proceed with your testimony. Yeah, my name is Mark Zachary. I'm a uh, resident of the 7th Council, uh, Council Manic District, and um, <clears throat> these bills are excellent bills, um, but to me, it, it really, I, and I was glad to hear you, that everyone was talking about kind of the bigger picture, um, and because to me, it raises the question as to why aren't there, like, why isn't there a radical rethink on how many cameras are installed in this city and why they aren't installed more widely. I mean, the police, according to news stories, have right now about 450 cameras. I'm not sure if that number is right. That number was mentioned by the Inquirer over a year ago. Um, and in my mind, every single one of those cameras should be upgraded to a modern high resolution of 4K. Uh, this is going to enable people to be identified uh, more easily. Um, and then city council should, and I hear some rumblings that maybe people are thinking about this, but I don't really hear anybody saying it out loud. Really, the number should be radically, radically increased to maybe 2,000 or 3,000 cameras in this city. Um, if you're going to spend $10,000 a camera, 2,000 cameras, that's $20 million. And the city just spent $120 million on violence prevention. And there's questions of storage. That can be answered. Uh, bandwidth can be answered by utilizing the city's franchises. Um, other major cities are doing this. They're, they're just not doing it, uh, asking certain kinds of questions. Um, and, for example, Chief Nestle testified that their clearance rates are 50% for SEPTA. They have a lot of cameras, and he stated that the cameras are the reason why they're getting such clearance rates. And I'll say that PPD's clearance rate is, what, 10 20% for murders? less for shooters. You got to think about this. What this means is that in 2021, there are thousands of extremely violent people and murders just walking around. You might have been around one in Wawa. You just don't even know it because they weren't caught. This is an excellent way to reduce gun violence by catching the criminals who are committing it. There's only a few thousand people who are doing this type of high violence in this city. We need to catch them, and we need to impose long sentences on them. And I think this is every, I think everyone here, from what I'm hearing, can agree on this. We need to give the police more tools, objective tools to help solve crime and get people behind bars. And, of course, there's going to be some objections, but I think that most of the people who live in the neighborhoods, especially the ones greatest, greatly affected by this, would be happy to see more cameras in their, in their area. Um, and maybe a conversation could be had about, okay, so we're going to have 3,000 cameras in this city. They're gonna, all going to be high resolution. Well, how do we address some privacy concerns? Maybe you could have what's called maybe a right to deletion. If three weeks goes by and there's no, uh, uh, you know, violent crimes, maybe that footage gets deleted. And maybe on, the cameras are only used to catch these hyper-violent people that are committing these horrors throughout the city. I just really hope that council members would think about this and be more radical in their implementation of technology to catch people that are committing these heinous acts on a daily basis throughout this city. And if you do it, and if you make the case for it, the voters will reward you, and people will be proud of the council instead of hearing mostly a lack of vision from you on this. 
and on many other issues, but mainly this. So I applaud this this effort and initiative, but you know, to me, what a million dollars is going to do? How many cameras exactly? Uh, I mean, really, the city should have thousands of them, high resolution, 4K, 8K cameras, 360 views. The police can use these cameras to catch the violent criminals. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zachary, for your testimony. Are there any questions from members of council for this witness? Seeing and hearing none, um, thank you for um, your testimony, Mr. Zachary. Um, I believe that concludes all of the witnesses that are scheduled here to testify. Are there any other comments or questions um, from members of this committee? Um, seeing none uh, and there being no further questions from the members of the committee and no other witnesses testify will ask if there's anyone else present this hearing whose name that we have failed to call and that wishes to offer testimony on any of the bills being considered today um, seeing and hearing none i want to thank all the panels and witnesses for their participation today we value your opinions i now invite all panels and witnesses to please disconnect from this finance committee hearing before we go into our public meeting. We will now pause the proceedings briefly as multiple participants will have an opportunity to leave the hearing. Okay, this concludes the public hearing of the Finance Committee and we will now go into a public meeting to consider action to, to be taken on the bills before this committee today. Um, Mr. Inuza, will you please call the roll to take attendance and please Members that are attendants, please indicate that you're present when your name is called. Also say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on screen when you speak. Council Member Cindy Bass. Good morning, I am still present, thank you. Council Member Alan Dom. Uh, good morning, I am present also, thank you. Council Member Curtis Jones Jr. Mr. Chair, members, I'm still here. Councilmember David O. Good morning. I'm present. Thank you. Councilmember Maria Canona Sanchez. Good morning. I am present. Councilmember Mark Squilla. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and colleagues. I'm present for the vote. Council President Clark. and Chair Derek Green. I am present. Thank you. And we are now into our public meeting and we do have a quorum for the public meeting uh, and we will be offering amendments um, to bill number 210782 uh, as well as amendment to bill number 210783. Um, those amendments have been circulated to all members of the committee. Um, and I believe Council Member Squilla, you are teed up to offer the amendments. Is that correct? Do I have the script, uh, Mr. Chair? Um, let me check to make sure on that. Council Member, it should just have gone through. Okay, we'll give Council Member Squilla a few moments to. I got it at the script and orient him with those amendments. I want to thank all the members of the Finance Committee for being here and helping us to have this be a quick and orderly and efficient committee hearing as we are preparing for the end of December and end of our council session. I know it's been a 
very busy time, but I appreciate all of you being here and participating uh, fully in this committee hearing. Um, with that, we will now go to Council Member Squilla. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I offer an amendment to Bill Number 210782. A copy of that amendment has been circulated to all members of the committee. I move that the amendment to Bill Number 210782 be approved. Second. Uh, it has been moved and it was properly seconded by Councilmember Curtis Jones that amendment to Bill Number 210782 be approved. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, um, the motion carries. Um, and the amendment to bill number 210782 has been approved. Uh, at this point, I will now call on council member Squilla for a motion on the amended bill number 210782. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the bill number 210782 as amended to be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended as to permit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. Uh, it has been moved and probably seconded by Councilmember Curtis Jones that Bill Number 210782, as amended, be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the motion carries. And I would now like to recognize. Council Member Squilla for a motion on the amendment for Bill Number 210783. You're on mute. Okay. We, oh. we lost you. Sorry about that. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chair. I open amendment to Bill Number 210783. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members of council of the committee and I move that the amendment of bill number 210783 be approved. Second. It is a move and properly seconded by Councilmember Jones that amendment to bill number 210783 be approved. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? Uh, the motion, the ayes have it, the motion carries and the amendment to bill number 210783 has been approved. Uh, the chair now recognizes Council Member Squilla for a motion for the amended bill number 210783. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that bill number 210782 be as amended, be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation. And further move that the rules of council be suspended as to permit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. I was been properly moved and seconded that bill number uh, 210783, as amended, be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. Um, now I'd like to recognize Council Member Squilla for motion on bill number 210864. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the bill number 210864 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation to further move the rules of council be suspended as to permit the first reading at the next session of council. Second. It is the move and properly seconded by Councilman Jones that bill number 210864 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Um, the most ayes have it and the motion carries. Um, unless there's any other comments, reflections, or perspectives from any members of the committee, this concludes the business for the Committee on Finance today. Thank you all very much for your attendance and participation. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank Take you. Care. Thank all right. You.